Good day to you. My name is Professor David Hasdai. I'm Professor in Cardiology at Tel Aviv University in Tel Aviv, Israel, and the Director of the Coronary Care Unit at Rabin Medical Center in Petah Tikva, Israel. I've been asked today to speak to you about the new product by HealthWatch that provides continuous, high-grade, non-obtrusive, 12 and 15 channel ECG monitoring. The aim of this new product by HealthWatch is to make it the new standard, not only in the intensive care unit, but also elsewhere, anytime and anywhere. So what do we know about traditional ECG monitoring? We know that it's restricted to one, three, or five channels. Usually it's pretty good for heart rate assessment, it is not that great for heart rhythm analysis. All of you know that it's difficult from the monitor to distinguish between a wide complex tachycardia, be it VT or aberrancy, supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy, but you do know that there is an arrhythmia. And we also know that it's very inaccurate in, ac in diagnosing myocardial ischemia. And in order to diagnose a heart attack, you need at least 12 channels in order to make the diagnosis of a heart attack. So there are shortcomings for the traditional ECG monitoring. Now, what do we know about the 12 and 15 channel ECG? We know it's cumbersome. We all know that you have to shave, prepare the skin, you have to apply a gel adhesive, and it also takes time to place the electrodes all over the chest wall and the arms and legs. It takes around 10 minutes to set up if you, if, from the minute that you bring in the device until you're ready to go. We all know that the, that the electrodes are not placed in a uniform manner, and sometimes in the chest, some place it to here and others place it there. It requires an ECG operator to use or familiarity with the device. And we all know that one, if you're in a department or a ward where the device is not used very frequently, and when you need to use it on an urgent basis, then no one knows how to operate the device. It's also impractical if you want to monitor a person with 12 or 15 leads over a few hours or a few days. And it's restricted to bedridden patients. And we all know how obtrusive it is with the spaghetti of wires that you have connected to your patient. Now, what, is the pr what are the pros for using 12 or 15 channels ECG monitoring? First of all, for ischemia, using 12 or 15 channels, it is the gold standard for di diagnosing myocardial infarction. We all know that 15 channel ECGs are not routinely done, but they are stipulated in guidelines to detect right ventricular infarction and posterior wall infarction. And indeed, we do know that if you use 12 lead ECGs, around 10% of acute myocardial infarctions may go undi underdiagnosed or undiagnosed, and they are undetected actually, and only if you use posterior uh, leads like V7, V8, do you diagnose posterior wall myocardial infarction. So there is an advantage even of using 15 channels over 12 channels. And also we do know that if you use continuous monitoring, be it 12 channel or 15 channel, it is good, it is essential for diagnosing reperfusion. In terms of arrhythmias, if you use 12 channels, as I've mentioned before in this talk, it is vital for to determine the anatomic orientation of arrhythmias, and it is stipulated in guide, guidelines in order to distinguish between different arrhythmias, and it may have therapeutic and prognostic ramifications in order to diagnose these arrhythmias. So there are pros for using 12 and 50 leads uh, ECG monitoring. So what are the cons? The, the major uh, contraindication is the spaghetti of wires that you have, and you have a patient who is hooked up to 10 or 15 wires, making it too obtrusive for the patient. Also, the gels and the adhesives irritate the skin, so you cannot use it over many hours or even days. And obviously, it's not applicable for mobile patients. Now, we do know that there are certain uh, systems that use uh, derived 12 ECGs instead of the standard 12 ECGs. For example, here you see in this slide the EASI uh, uh, method 
for determining or for deriving 12 ADCG. It uses only five channels. It may prohibit detection of subtle ECG changes and subtle ischemia. And if you think you see something in uh, a monitor using this kind of system, then you have to bring in the routine standard ECG and do it. So it does not substitute the, EC, the standard ECG. It's just an a introductory uh, or a screening uh, method. And then in order to confirm the diagnosis, you have to do a 12 or 50 lead ECG. So what is the HealthWatch garment solution to this issue? First of all, it provides continuous ECG monitoring, and it does that using actual 12 or 15 channel ECG, not derived from five or three channels. These are actual 12 or 15 channels. You, you don't have heavy electrodes, no adhesives, no shaving, no wires attached to the patient. So this is totally non-obtrusive. Also, the, the electrodes are placed in a standardized way, so there's no way of going back and every patient having different electrodes placed all over his chest. Every patient will have the same uh, placement of the electrodes using the same shirt. There's no expertise needed to operate it. You just put it on, press a button, and it starts working. So there, you don't have to be familiar with the, the device as is with the standard ECG. It's ideal for bedridden and for mobile patients. And this is the major breakthrough using this monitoring system. It's also for ambul ambulatory patients, inpatients, outpatients, high cardiac risk individuals, and health conscious individuals who need or seek vigilant monitoring. This uh, picture here shows you an ECG, a standard ECG, using the standard, e this is a GE Mac 5500 machine, and you see the ECG that's derived using all these wires. And this is the same individual wearing, in this case, he's supine, but he can be standing, he can be walking, and using, there are no wires attached to this individual, and you get the same ECG of the highest quality. You cannot tell the difference. Here, with a myriad of wires, here, no wire whatsoever. So what are the, uh, the implications of using such a garment? You can use it to monitor high-risk non-cardiac unit in patients, in internal medicine wards, in surgery wards, and all over the hospital, not in the coronary care unit, although it can be used also in the coronary care units and step-down units. It, provides, uh, it has the potential to provide earlier discharge of patients and you can tell the patients when they go, once they go home, you're going to be monitored in the same way that you were monitored while you were in hospital. You, you're monitored and you can see all the signs, the vital signs that we saw when you were in the hospital, we're going to see when you're at home. This has the potential to reduce readmissions due to false alarms. And I think every one of you is familiar with the case where your patient calls you one or two or three days after being discharged, maybe after having a, a coronary intervention, and he feels some kind of chest discomfort, or he's a bit dizzy, and he tells you that, and you have no way of knowing what your patient actually f feels or what's his c condition. Using this garment, you can have all the vital signs, and you can have an ECG as if he were standing next to you in the coronary care unit. And by doing so, on the one hand, you can reduce readmissions. On the other hand, you can maybe detect uh, pathologies which would go unnoticed by the patient when you monitor him. And also, up to now, we've been talking about patients. You can also monitor high-risk individuals during their routine daily activities. So if you have, for example, a diabetic, hypertensive patient who's a smoker and he engages maybe in high-risk professions or he uh, has an, uh, a very active lifestyle and he wants to be monitored and he's afraid of arrhythmias or ischemia, you can monitor him almost at the same way that you would monitor him on an inpatient basis. So does, what else does the ECG, does the HealthWatch uh, device provide on top of the ECG, it provides body posture, body posture and motion status, respiratory rate, and skin temperature. 
All of these are helpful in augmenting the safety of the patient, whether he's in the coronary care unit or anywhere else in the hospital. In the future, and currently our st the, the staff of HealthWatch are working on this, there's going to be oximetry embedded into the, the, uh, the garment. There's going to be a special garment being de uh, devised at this moment for fetal monitoring of pregnant women. And there's going to be a device which is going to be embedded into the garment, which will continuously monitor in a non-invasive way your blood pressure. And what is the goal of this uh, uh, concept? The concept is comprehensive cardiopulmonary monitoring to provide, and that's a key issue here, intensive care monitoring quality that is not restricted to intensive care units. It is available anywhere in the hospital or outside the hospital. So I think, ladies and gentlemen, in, two, in 1902, Eindhoven introduced the first ECG. This was a device called the galvanometer meter, which uh, weighed over 600 pounds, and it only provided one lead of ECG. In 1929, we were all very happy when the 12 lead ECG was introduced. That's 85 years ago, using wires. Over 85 years, nothing has changed. Maybe the ECG has been miniaturized, but the concept of using wires and making it very obtrusive has remained so. In 2013, with the introduction of the Health Watch Monitor, the ECG Monitor, this, came, this is a game changer. We do not have uh, wires anymore. We do not have adhesives anymore. No skin preparation. And this makes the ECG a product which will be available to anyone, be it an inpatient, an outpatient, or a high-risk individual. Thank you.